Hey everybody, welcome to BFR Tuesday. My name is Ed LaCara. I am out of Dallas, Texas, and I will be um, taking you through our weekly BFR chat. Today we are going to talk about the immune response to BFR. And I think it's really fascinating that even though there's no muscle damage, our body and our brain respond to the tissue like there's muscle damage. And so we get this not only endocrine response, but we get this um, inflammatory response, um, which may aid in muscle hypertrophy and explain why strength changes can occur in such a little amount of time, as little as two to three weeks. All right, so if anybody has any questions for me, you can start off, uh, I like to start off with that, just uh, shoot it right into that comments section and I'd be happy to answer anything right now BFR related. Um, in addition, I have uh, put the study that I'm going to be talking about in the link so you can download that. I've highlighted some areas that we'll be chatting about and um, we will be doing that in a few seconds here. Any questions? All right, I'm gonna share my screen, um, get into a little uh, little mini presentation and that will be it. All right. Okay, so. Hopefully everybody can see this. I'm gonna drop this just in case. All right. So here we have um, here we have a, a nice review of the um, immune cell and uh, the role of inflammation uh, with blood flow restriction training. And I've gone through to highlight a few things. I also have a summary slide at the end. Uh, I'm going to be honest. These types of um, research articles are not that interesting for me. I, um, I think it's important. We have to understand it. Um, and this is definitely not my strong suit. I want to get people moving and active. And that's, that's kind of more where I get excited. But this is also exciting, especially from a rehab standpoint. Because if we can promote a anti-inflammatory event without causing muscle damage, it might explain why we get such good responses with tendonitis, tendinosis, um, and muscle strains because we're creating that anti-inflammatory cascade by using BFR. So let's kind of chat about this. So um, this was done by uh, Rossi and his group and out of Italy. And um, this is a great review. I mean, this is something that kind of takes a few times to read through. This was published in 2018, was shared with me um, uh, by Chase Phelps, uh, formerly of Stanford University, now with um, uh, the military. And um, so, yeah, here we go. So the first thing I highlighted in this introduction is, is following exercise, neutrophils or white blood cells are the first immune cells to initiate the tissue remodeling process via several mechanisms, including an increased production of cytokines and recruitment of monocytes and macrophages, which facilitate the phagocytosis of foreign particles, the differentiation of myoblasts and the formation of new myotubes, or in this case, muscle, muscle fibers. Um, so what he's going through is going to talk about how this all applies with BFR. Um, remember, high intensity exercise is defined as 65 to 90% one rep max. Um, strength training originally was thought that you had to do at least 70% of your one rep max um, at least a couple times a week in order to cause strength and hypertrophy. Uh, because of BFR in the last few years, we've discovered that is not necessarily the case. Um, and there's also a growing body of evidence that lower intensity exercise taken to, um, taken to failure will also 
cause strength and hypertrophy changes. We've seen this um, with TRX suspension trainer where they weren't using any weights at all. They were just using the suspension trainer and body weight. Um, we've also seen this, um, especially with uh, Schoenfield, Dr. Schoenfield demonstrating um, in 2016 that if you take light weights to failure, um, does it have to be exactly to failure? It looks like within a couple of reps of failure. But what happens to muscle tissue when we take exercises all the way to failure is that we cause muscle damage. And that muscle damage decreases the amount of work that we can do for the next few days. How does it decrease the amount of work? Well, it decreases the amount of torque that can be produced. It decreases range of motion. It increases um, muscle soreness. Um, and a lot of times these, these are measured in uh, plasma studies looking at uh, creatine kinase or lipid peroxidase. Um, so the take home is, is that we're doing BFR with low intensity. It's not causing any muscle damage, yet we're still getting this inflammatory response, which may be one of the key signalers um, for strength and hypertrophy. The other thing that we have to remember is that we create an ischemic or lack of oxygen hypoxic environment, and that enhances the training effect as well. Um, we still don't understand this whole process. It, there's still a lot to learn, um, but one of the main things that we're looking at is, is this hypoxic environment seems to stimulate um, both intracellular anaerobic or anabolic and catabolic pathways um, through mechanotransduction. And mechanotransduction, um, and I'm right here, where sarcolemma bound mechanoreceptors like integrins stimulate intracellular anabolic and catabolic pathways, which convert mechanical energy into chemical signals, promoting protein synthesis instead of muscle degradation. So basically working like a, a quad extension stimulates through that work a chemical response that will then transmit to the brain. The brain then responds with uh, things to help protein synthesis instead of protein uh, breakdown. Um, I'm not going to read this word for word, but um, if you are interested in this, I would look even further. I, I think what is super interesting to me is this this thought of creating this inflammatory cascade in an injured tissue um, that is not injured and that might help us with some of our um, chronic tendinopathies that don't have true white blood cell. We're probably not getting um, a real inflammatory response there. And we do things in the clinic to try to promote that um, that inflammatory response like dry needling or an active release technique uh, physicians will inject uh, PRP and they'll inject cortisone and they'll inject these things. Um, and it, we can, it looks like we can stimulate that in a kind of a couple different ways. One, like we've been doing, um, but number two, we can also do that with um, BFR. Um, so he goes through and he continues to talk about the different um, potential mechanisms for why these things increase. The neutrophil and macrophage response to resistance exercise is really good read. Um, if you look at uh, this right here, neutrophils, macrophages, and T cells seem to be the first immune cells to initiate the recovery process following exercise induced muscle damage. So if the body thinks that there isn't damage going on, we're going to get this local inflammatory response, which may help with not only stimulating protein synthesis, but also stimulating um, healing of any injured tissue. Um, I know stem cells are like a big, a big word right now. And I've been looking for other ways to stimulate, um, stem cells, especially myostem cells in, um, injured muscle tissue. Uh, we do know that we do get stem cell proliferation with, um, with BFR in conjunction with other things as well, like, like shockwave therapy. Um, Here's a, a section on the neutrophil and macrophage response to blood flow restriction exercise um, with nice, nice amounts of references. Um, 
And then here is really kind of the, the synopsis with a couple studies being as recent as 2017, two studies, Nielsen and also Beringer, um, looking at what's really happening to blood lactate, hormonal response, cellular swelling and biomarkers of muscle damage and neutrophil counts. Um, you can see that Beringer found increase in neutrophil counts, increase in lactate muscle swelling, increase in growth hormone and uh, creatine kinase. And Nielsen found increase in macrophage and BFR and low intensity training, increase in macrophage M2 only in the BFR, increase in HSP27 expression, um, and maybe no change in L6. So um, go through this if this is interesting to you. Um, I put a a little slide together, just kind of summarizing. So this, so summary is exercise induced muscle damage activates stem cells, pro-inflammatory cytokines and immune cells. BFR and low intensity exercise does not appear to cause muscle damage or at least muscle damage in ways that we know how to measure. Um, hypoxia and metabolic, um, Well, I should say hypoxia creates a metabolic cascade, um, increasing hydrogen, increasing lactate accumulation, and um, these other inflammatory responses. And then BFR appears to increase muscle protein. So the synthesis and immune cell response that accompanies hypertrophy. Um, so yeah, so I just wanted to share that study with you guys so you could see and take a read if it was something of interest. Um, I'm going to stop sharing and answer any questions. All right, so any questions regarding um, regarding the study, but definitely take a look at this, download it, um, take a read, think about how that applies to your patients or your, or your athletes. Um, And hopefully that will be of some assistance to you and your people. If there's any specific questions, um, you can always get a hold of me. I'm located um, at, at edlacara.com. Um, happy to answer any questions. And um, otherwise, oh, Michelle is asking me, did you say we get a stem cell response with radial shock wave? And can I send the slide? Sure, I can do that. Um, but the answer, yes, there is stem cell increase with increase with um, I'm wondering, I think I have my, I have one of the studies, I think right here. Let me see if I can See if I can pull it out. I won't spend. I won't waste everybody's time. Not that it's a waste, but I won't spend everybody's time looking for it. Um, but if I have it, uh, Michelle, I'll send it over to you. I'll look for it. I'll find it for you. All right. And um, send the slide. I think I can do that as well. All right. Thank you so much. Um, uh, are there parameters that we can change in order to get specific immune responses? Do you mean um, Maddie, do you mean with BFR? Because these most of these studies were all looked at uh, 30, 15, 15, 15, um, 50% limb occlusion pressure in the upper extremity, uh, uh, like going from continuous to intermittent pressures. Um, I would keep your pressures the same. I mean, in the upper extremity, I'm using 50% limb occlusion pressure and the lower extremity using 80% limb occlusion pressure. I keep the, I keep it um, inflated throughout the whole exercise. And then I deflate between exercises so that the total occlusion is only about um, six and a half minutes total. 
I think that's what you mean by continuous versus intermittent. Um, continuous to me would mean that I keep it, I keep the limb inflated or I keep the cuff inflated throughout a whole training session. Um, I have found that with the cuffs that I use that if I do that, if I have the weight, the resistance, right. And I have the, um, and I also have the, uh, pressures, right. People want the cuffs off, uh, after that last round of 15, uh, because, uh, they're just ready for a little, little micro break. If I don't have enough pressure or you're using a cuff that, um, is not truly occluding, then the exercise comes off fairly easy and, um, and they don't, it's no big deal. And I know that if that's the case, they're not begging me to take that cuff off after an exercise that, um, I'm probably not at high enough pressure or enough resistance. Uh, I'm very wary of the amount of resistance because I don't want to cause muscle damage. So I keep, I keep the loads low and would rather, um, Oh, I see what you're saying. So I, I think we actually want to create the inflammatory response. There is no muscle damage with the FR, um, according to numerous studies. If you go through that, it'll, it'll list them for you as well. So the, the risk is really not there for muscle damage and that's measured um, both directly and indirectly, creatine kinase, lipid peroxidase, um, and then indirectly through uh, torque, um, through, um, uh, delayed onset muscular soreness. Um, and so it's not a bad thing that we get that inflammatory response. And, and, and I actually think it's good to get the inflammatory response. And if you go intermittent pressures, you're not going to trap the metabolites. And Lonaki has found um, that you lose all the valuable benefits of BFR if you deflate between um, sets because you're not trapping all those metabolites. You're not going to get the metabolite induced uh, fatigue because it's going to allow all that metabolite to get back into the system and it will dilute it. You won't create that um, acidic environment locally um, in the muscle. So keep the pressures uh, consistent, keep them inflated throughout the exercise and then deflate for a minute and then go to the next exercise is my opinion. You're, you're really mitigating your risk by getting uh, quantifying limb occlusion pressure, screening out, making sure that there is no, you know, there's no contraindications. Um, but I do think that that metabolite induced fatigue is, is the magic. It's, it's what we need. Absolutely. My pleasure. All right, y'all, I'm going to get going. I got patience in about 12 minutes. So um, if there's nothing else, I will see y'all next week. Thank you so much.